In this video, we'll review how to work with expressions that have both exponents and radicals. In particular, we'll look at how to simplify these expressions and how to move between the two forms. To begin, keep in mind that any expression with a fractional exponent, such as x to the a over b, can be rewritten as the following, the bth root of x to the a. This means that if you take any fractional exponent, the bottom, or the denominator, becomes the index of the radical and the top number of the fractional exponent, the uh, numerator, becomes the uh, power inside the radical that we're going to use here. So a was on top, a becomes the power. So we get x to the a. b is on the bottom, it tells me we're going to take the b root of a, x to the a. Alright, so let's look at some examples of how to do this now. We're going to write each expression with an exponent. We're going to take, e take each of these that have a radical and write them as exponential form. Now I know that if it's the fourth root, that's going to become the bottom of the fraction of the exponent. We're taking x and raising it to the third power, so 3 will become the top. So when I rewrite this, it'll become x to the 3 over 4, or x to the 3 fourths. Try the same thing for problems 2 and 3. For problem 2, we're taking the 7th root. We're taking the 7th root of 2 to the 5th power, so this will become 2 to the 5 sevenths. On a number 3, we're taking the second root, or basically the square root, of y to the ninth. The square root of y to the ninth would become y to the nine halves. Now I'm going to put two examples that go the other way. In these ones, we're going to write each expression using a radical. I'll give you a minute, think about what the answers would be, and then let's check it. For problem four, we have x to the four elevenths. Eleven is on the bottom, and that becomes the index of the radical. So we're going to take the 11th root of x to the 4th. And on number 5, we have y to the 7 halves, so we'll take the second root of y to the 7. Now we typically do not write a second root. A second root is the only one that does not get the index written, and that's just going to be written as the square root. So better off would be to write the square root of y to the 7th. It means the same thing. Now let's look at a couple harder examples. Here we're going to go ahead and simplify these, and the first one's pretty straightforward. I have x to the 12 thirds. I know that 12 divided by 3 is just 4. 3 goes into 12 evenly and it goes in 4 times. So x to the 12 thirds becomes just x to the 4th. But the other ones are going to be a little bit tougher. 9 fourths does not reduce to a whole number. That's because 4 does not go into 9 evenly. Instead, I know that 4 does go into 9 twice. So I can say this is y squared, but I have something left over. 4 goes into 9 twice, that makes 8, which means we still have 1 left over to get to 9. And the way we write that is we still have a y to the 1 fourth. Now from our previous ones, we see that uh, something with an, a fractional exponent can be rewritten. I can say that that is the same as y squared times the fourth root of y. y to the 1 fourth is the same as the fourth root of y to the 1. I don't typically write y to the 1, and we just call it y. Now try that same thing here with number 3. Here we've got z to the uh, raised to the 15 over 8. I know that 8 will not go into 15 evenly, but it does go in one time. So I can say that's z to the 1, or just z, but it's going to have something left over. I'll still have 7 left over, so I'll get z, and then because I still have 7 of the uh, pieces left over, I'm going to get z to the 7 eighths. Now z to the 7 eighths can be rewritten. If we want to write that as a radical, we can say that the index would be 8, because that's the bottom of the fraction, and it's going to be 8th um, root of z to the 7th. So we can rewrite this as z times the eighth root of z to the seventh. Now either of those answers would be correct. You could write it as z times z to the seven eighths, or you could write it as z times the eighth root of z to the seven. Again, either form is correct. Now I could do this another way. Instead of going straight to the exponents, I could rewrite each of these as a radical. I could say that instead of x to the twelve thirds, I could say this is the third root of x to the twelfth. I can then reduce by taking the index and dividing the index into the radicals, or the exponents. If I divide the uh, index into the exponents, 3 goes into 12 four times. It goes in evenly, so I just get x to the fourth. I can rewrite the next one in the same fashion. Instead of y to the 9 fourths, I can say it's the fourth root of y to the 9. I know that 4 goes into 9 twice, and you still have one left over. Because 4 goes into 9, to 9 twice, I can say it's y squared, and because I still have one left over, 
I still have times the fourth root of y to the 1, or fourth root of y. We can do the same thing on the next one. Instead of z to the um, 15 over 8, I can say this is the eighth root of z to the 15th power. 8 goes into 15 once, so I get z to the 1, and I still have 7 left over. So I have z times the eighth root of z to the 7. Now, either method, you'll notice, you still get the same answers. All the answers we got for those three problems are the same. It's just how you approach it. You can change any radical to an exponent or any exponent to radicals. Either method will work. Just find one you're comfortable with and use it. Now we're going to look at six harder examples. These ones are a little bit harder because most of these have both a coefficient and a variable. So something like this where we have a coefficient in front, we're going to go ahead and rewrite that uh, that coefficient using exponents. I want to try writing both pieces as exponents so I can reduce them, because I can't take the square root of 81. So because I can't take the square root of 81, I'm going to make a factor tree and figure out another way to say 8 using exponents. I know that 8 is 4 times 2, and 4 is 2 times 2, so another way to think of 8 is 2 to the third power. 2 times 2 times 2 is another way to make 8. So rewriting this with exponents, I can say I'm taking the square root of 2 to the third power, times x to the 14th. Now you can put the 2 in front if this helps you, because now I'll use the uh, rules that we just used before and say that the index 2 goes into the exponent of 3 one time. 2 goes into 3 once, so I have a 2 to the 1 power out. I still have 1 left over, so I still have a square root of 2. Now I'm going to turn my attention to the uh, variable. I have x to the 14th. My index 2 goes into the exponent 14 seven times. It goes in evenly, so I have nothing left over. It's just going to become 2x to the 7th times the square root of 2. Now, I could rewrite this using exponents, in which case um, I would uh, change it as the 1 half power. I would say it's the quantity 2 to the 3rd, x to the 14th, raised to the 1 half power, and then just uh, multiply the exponents, and I would get the same answer. For the next one, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the radical. And inside that radical, I'm going to change the 81 to exponents. I know that 81, if I use a factor tree, is 9 times 9. 9 can still be broken down as 3 times 3. And then the other 9 would also be 3 times 3, which means I really have 3 to the 4th power. 3 to the 4th power is 81. So rewriting it, I would get this. Now I can use my rules and divide the index into the exponents. 3 goes into 4 once, so I have 3 to the 1 outside. I still have a 3 left over. So I still have, that should be a cube root of 3. And then 3 goes into 8 twice with 2 left over. Now this has an error on it that I really should address. That this problem should have the 3 as the index. So that needs to have that 3 right there. I typoed that when I wrote this. So it should be 3x squared times the third root of 3x squared. And that's going to disappear here on the next click. So I want you to go and try the next couple problems. Try to work these out on your own, and then resume the video to check your answers. If you're not able to do that, go through, watch how I do them, and then go back, rewind the video, copy the problems down, and retry it, and make sure you actually know it. The only way you're going to learn these is actually to try it for yourself. So I really recommend that you try these before you just uh, watch the rest of the video. Or go back, watch the video, and then uh, try the problems on your own again, and then check your answers. So I'm going to give you a minute here, try the rest, and then we'll go over them. So in problem 3, I've got 16 to the 3 fourths. I'm going to rewrite that 16 using exponents. I know that 2 to the 4th power is the same as 16. I can now raise 2 to the 4th to the 3 fourths. To do that, I'll multiply the 4 times 3, which is 12, and then it's over 4. So I get 2 to the 12 fourths. Well, 12 fourths can be reduced, and it goes in, 4 goes into 12 evenly. So it's just 2 to the 3rd power. And then multiplying that out, 2 times 2 times 2, is 8. So the simplest answer would be to say that that 2 to the 3rd becomes 8. Now, I could have rewrote in this one using the radicals. I could say that it's 16. Instead of 3 fourths, I could rewrite it as the 4th root of 16 cubed. And it would look like this. I can then rewrite the 16 as 2 to the 4th. Multiply the exponents that are inside the radical, 4 times 3 is 12, and then the index 4 goes into the 12 three times.
and like the previous problem to the third, is still 8. You get the same answer, just how you want to approach it. Again, any radical can be written as exponents, and any exponent can be written as a radical. Now I can do the same thing for number 4 with 27. 27 is 3 times 3 times 3, or 3 to the third power. Multiplying 3 times 5 thirds, I get 3 to the 15 thirds. 15 thirds reduces to a whole number, it's just 3 to the fifth. And 3 multiplied together 5 times is 243. Again, we could do this as radicals. We could say that it's the third root of 27 to the fifth power. Simplify the 27 like we did in the other side, um, in blue. We could say that 27 is 3 to the third. Multiply the exponents, we get 3 to the 15th. So that's the cube root of 3 to the 15th. And then 3 goes into 15 five times. Still going to be 243. Now, I need to show you that both answers are the same. So either approach, however you want to do this problem, is going to get you the same answer. So if you like exponents, use the exponent method. If you prefer radicals, stick to the radical method. For the next two, again, I'm going to have to simplify that 64 into an exponent form. And I know that 64 is the same as 2 to the 6th. And then I can uh, go ahead and multiply out the exponents. 2 to the 6th raised to the 1 6th becomes 2 to the 6 6 And x to the 11th raised to the 1 6 becomes x to the 11th 6 2 to the 6 6 becomes just 2 to the 1, or 2. And x to the 11th 6, well that one's not going to be a whole number. 6 goes into 11 once, so you get x to the 1, but there's still something left over. There's 5 pieces left over, so you get x to the 5 6. Now we could again approach this as a radical and say that this is going to be the 6th root of 2 to the 6th times x to the 11th. The index 6 goes into the exponent once, and then it goes into the 6 goes into the 11th once, and has 5 left over. So I would say that because 2 goes into 6 once, you get one of the 2's out. There's nothing left over for the 2's. And then because 6 goes into the 11th once, you get an x, but there's still 5 left over. So it's times the 6th root of x to the 5th. Treating number 6 the same way, I know that 121 can be written as 11 squared. So I can say this is the quantity 11 squared, x to the 20, all raised to the 1 half. Because it's being raised to the 1 half, now I can kind of distribute that exponent and go, well, it's really x to the 2 halves times x to the 20 halves. 11 to the 2 halves becomes just 11 to the 1, or just 11, and x to the 20 halves becomes just x to the 10. Treating this with radicals, I would say it's the square root. The 1 half power is the same as the square root. And I'll go ahead and convert the 121 to 11 squared. The square root of 11 squared is just 11, because 2 goes into 2 once. And the square root of x to the 20 is just x to the 10, because again, that 2 goes into 20 10 times. So I still get the same answer. All right, I hope this helped you understand how to work with radicals and exponents, and thank you for watching.